Well, hello, my friends, it's Sean Petit, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Look at this grungy, yummy goodness we're creating today. Here are the supplies that we'll be using, and yes, I'm still using my color shaper tools. The stencils that we'll be using today, and these two will be on sale. So I'm working on a 12 by 12 MDF board, and I am using my color shaper to um, put down my... Um, uh, fluid matte medium <laughs> and um, I actually like how it spreads out the medium um, and how I can kind of press down the papers um, so I am feeling more and more comfortable as I use my color shaper or you can call it a silicone brush I've got two different ones and um, am feeling my way through them so I am I've just grabbed some vintage papers from a couple of the collage packs in the shop and um, they're just kind of random bits and putting those down again with Liquitex Fluid Matte Medium and getting that whole thing covered. So um, now I am going to again be using my um, silicone brushes or my color shapers, whatever you choose to call them. Um, and I'm really getting a feel for them and being able to get that kind of grungy feeling that I really wanted when I first started and didn't really <laughs> have the skills to do it uh, yet because I wasn't familiar and that's what it takes practice. But I'm using um, Gesso and Nova Colors uh, Gray and then just kind of scratchy, real scratchy across the, the papers. Um, with my brush, my silicone brushes and um, really working a light layer and that's what I love about the silicone brushes is that they definitely give you this kind of um, light layer and kind of pull it off and um, I really love that and so the papers are really you know showing up um, and kind of standing out and I, that's what I was going for and I'm just kind of layering white, my gesso and my gray right now, um, just trying to get some um, coverage and kind of push back those papers and get ready for what we've got going on. And again, trying to have a light layer so that those papers do still show through because we've got a lot of layers left to go. And now I'm just gonna introduce a little bit of raw umber. And I am really liking how I can get this kind of um, unexpected kind of uh, really transparent layers with the silicone brushes. All of the supplies will be listed on the blog and the link to the blog will be down below in the YouTube description box. I'm just going to continue to layer um, until it feels right and, and it feels balanced. Um, working hard, it's really hard for me, working hard to not cover absolutely all of the papers up. <laughs> um, a Stabilo All Pencil and um, just kind of some random sketchy lines and really what I'm trying to kind of resemble is maybe some water lines or marbling or that kind of thing in the like wall. and. Um, Again, using my Stabilo All to kind of get my line down there for my ground. Then I'm just going to dip my, my silicone brush in water and um, kind of move that Stabilo All pencil around, and this was fun. Um, and I continue to kind of dip my brush in, once I did this, um, into water. And so um, I, I've got a little bit of acrylic ink, Liquitex acrylic ink out here, and this is muted violet. And again, dripping my silicone brush into water and then kind of laying it down. And I really have a lot of control uh, with the silicone brush and moving it around. And again, I'm trying to get kind of maybe some veining or some line water drippage or that kind of thing for the background. So now that I've got that color down, I am using super heavy gesso and my silicone brush tool and the this was fantastic with the brush tool because it gave me it didn't give me a perfectly 
um, filled in space and line. Um, it gave me this real scratchy feel and I loved that. So I will definitely do that again, but you can see how it looks real kind of scratchy and light and um, not perfect. And that's exactly what I wanted and it worked out wonderfully. So I'll definitely use my tool for this again. Look at how gorgeous that looks. Just that alone is amazing. And I'm just going to add some random bricks out into the wall so that it, you know, looks like it's old and falling apart and things have fallen off or the plaster is worn away. And I'm adding just a little bit of texture down at the bottom for the street or the ground. And again, I'm using super heavy gesso. Now we know we can't have that just perfectly white, so where I just got a little bit of some transparent raw umber and from um, Liquitex, um, it's acrylic ink, and just kind of moving that around and laying it in specific spots, not covering up all the white because that white is helping it stand out and and not having it blend into the background. Um, so it's important to have the white, but yet I don't want it to be too pretty because it's an old grungy wall. And so I'm just kind of moving that acrylic ink around. My brush is watered down. And um, now that that's dry, I'm going to add a little bit of some uh, teal, I believe. And again, the supplies will be listed, but kind of like rusty, like pipes have rusted or the tin roof or something has, you know, dripped down. And um, I just wanted a little tiny bit here and there just for some color too, to kind of give it some interest so it's not quite so neutral. And just dri dipping my brush again in and kind of moving it around. And now just a little bit of raw sienna. Um, kind of that yellowy grungy tint is, um, I think it needed that as well. Um, and again, trying hard not to cover up all the white. And so now that I've got all of my color down, I am going to add, I printed out some, this is a new collage pack in the shop and I think you're going to love it because I love it. Um, it's uh, like vintage graphics and grungy graphics or grungy like old plans for houses and different things like that with odd numbers and like there's a 45 degree angle thing and just all kinds of stuff and so I wanted this piece to be different because it goes along with the um, inspiration for my word that's on it um, and so I put I printed out that collage pack out on tissue paper and then put the random bits down and I love it love 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 it And now I'm just um, stenciling out on tissue paper some numbers to kind of go along with that kind of industrial um, graphic kind of feel. And I was really unsure about putting those um, images like right over the brick, um, but I really wanted it to be different. And um, I loved how it turned out, loved it. So I'm just going to put those numbers down and, um, you know, stenciling on tissue paper is just one of the best ways to get some really interesting um, designs or patterns or anything like that without any risk. And same thing with printing on tissue paper, because if I'd put down those papers and decided, oh my gosh, I just hate it. I could just pick them right back up and nothing's you know been harmed the piece is still great and i can move on and find something else so tissue paper is just a wonderful wonderful tool in my toolbox for mixed media 
So I'm using my General's Charcoal Pencil now and I'm just going to begin the shading process and um, I will shade all around in between the bricks, giving them some dimension. And um, I will switch back and forth between um, um, so some soft pastels and wanted to add a little bit more teal in there to kind of uh, add, bring out that that teal color that we've got going on in the background. And I will just kind of shade some and use some of my soft pastels and work back and forth between my charcoal pencil and my pastels just to give this some depth and dimension. I hope you stick around for the conversation at the end. Um, it's a good one about um, <clears throat> what inspired this and um, I'm super excited about the word that I put on here. It's rebuild. And um, I'm super excited about rebuilding a few things in my own life. And I share about that at the end of the video. I'm just working now to highlight some of those areas. It's a super simple project, um, but I felt really, it felt was felt dramatic. And I chose to write out my word with my charcoal pencil because I wanted it to be per personal and I wanted it to be imperfect, um, kind of like I was sketching out a plan, like, and that's kind of why I had those graphics um, in the background, uh, because I have a plan to make some changes and different things like that, and I'm super excited about it. So. That's about it. I'm going to add just a few more additional pieces of shading and that's it, my friends. Um, thank you so much for joining me. And if you enjoyed today's project, um, subscribe and like and share. And again, stick around for the conversation. Um, it's a good one. I will see you next week. Well, hello, my friends, and happy Sunday to you. So this is almost done. I, after I stepped away from it for a little, for a little bit, I, it felt like it needed like a pop of color somewhere. And so um, I brought in a little bit of teal, which uh, right away it helps. It helps it. And so I'm going to kind of bring in a few bits of that. It's a brighter teal. Just put a couple of marks here and there kind of bring some of that out and then a little bit of this purple yeah oh that's gorgeous for like some shadow that I love 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 Just a little bit. I don't want to take away from the gorgeous, grungy goodness that's already happening on this piece. But just that little bit, a pop of color. So maybe a little bit over here, kind of balance it out. Okay. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, yes, yes. I'm going to grab a little bit of white here and add just, don't be shy about it. Put a little bit of white in there. Yeah. Perfect. All right. I won't fuss with it anymore. Because that's when it start getting t like too much. Yeah, that's that looks great. Okay. Oh, so good. Oh man, so so good. Okay. Um, let me. Um. Let me grab a couple papers real quick. Okay, so I got my papers. I forgot to um, print them out. So. Um, couple things about this piece. Uh, the There's a new collage pack in the shop and that's what I used 
um, for all of these interesting little bits of things. It's called Grungy Textured Plans, and it's it's um, like vintage or old uh, plans with kind of that have been like maybe faxed or something that have kind of that grungy stuff on it. Some some of them are like des graphic design plans. Um, just really yummy good stuff that you can use in backgrounds. Now, um, this would be fine, like um, printed out like this on paper. But I, for me, the way how I would use these is printed out on tissue paper, um, like I did, because then you can grab bits and pieces of it. Like this is just an arrow, a graph, this kind of uh, 45 degree angle these different kinds of little bits and things that mm, I just love. Even this like grungy bit of goodness that I put down here with these little like register marks and that kind of thing. I love it. Love it. Love it. And it was perfect for this piece. Um, I'm just trying to think. I don't think the stencils that I, there's, I only used two this week. The door stencil and the numbers stencil. Those will be on sale. This new collage pack. There's nine pages. This is just four of them. There's not, there's uh, five more. Um, super fun. I just love it. Can't wait to use it all. But I think I'm just going to print them all out on tissue paper and have them ready to use. Um, and uh, that is really it for this week. I'm trying to think. It feels like I just keep forgetting things. But the, my schedule was so busy leading up to January that now that it's slowed down it feels weird <laughs> um, so anyway that's it for if I think of anything I'll put it in the blog post um, and uh, just a reminder the new workshop is um, still going strong people are loving it uh, mixed media kickstart okay to this um, this is really actually very simple I mean it's grungy and there was some gorgeous yummy layers mm. um, but the where the, where I why I got here and why I did this was um, I was um, go I was you know journaling which is a, is a normal process for me doing my devotions in the morning and then I journal and kind of plan out my day and that's kind of my routine and um, I, in my conversation in my journal um, I was kind of talking about I need to rebuild because I developed some terrible habits um, during the year of 2020, it kind of as, you know, like the excuse that there was a pandemic that I couldn't really take care of myself. <laughs> um, you know, gyms were closed, you know, different things like that. I mean, I they were all excuses. There, there wasn't a real good reason except except there are reasons why we kind of do that because there was just so many things happening and it just was traumatic in a lot of ways to all of us um, but I use that to get back into eating poorly to not working out and taking care of myself to not to overworking um, which is where I go when I when I can't control anything or um, I'm stressed I overwork and so, um, t so for, for, um, 2021, my goal is to work less, um, like my word said, be more grounded and really kind of rebuild the, the great habits that I had before all the crazy, crazy happened. Um, and so as I was, you know, kind of going through that dialogue in my journal and I, um, I, I said, re I kind of kept that word rebuild kept coming to mind over and over again. And um, I, I at first was thinking about restore, like restore my patterns, restore myself. And I looked up the definition to restore and it says to, to, um, to make something as it was, which is good. I mean, cause I'd, I had very good habits. I, my weight was great. All those kinds of things. I was feeling really good about so many things physically, personally. Um, but as I was thinking about that, I thought, I, I don't want to just go back to how I was. I want to, I want to be better. 
um, I'm always growing and learning and I want to be better. And so I started thinking about that and I started thinking about this word rebuild. And um, <clears throat> rebuild means, to, or rebuild and remodel, which I thought was interesting, which is why I got to this. Um, so I looked up rebuild and the synonym is remodel. And rebuild's um, definition is build after it's been damaged, which, whew, we got a lot of rebuilding to do in 2021. And then um, remodel is to change the structure, to physically change it, to rebuild, to re remodel, is to bring it back to, to where it was, but make it better, to change the structure and somehow. Um, <clears throat> and restore was return to its original condition, and which is fine. But I want, I want to do more. And so that's why I, I really began to think about rebuilding, rebuilding my habits and my patterns and my thoughts and all those kinds of things, rebuilding it and remodeling it to be something better. And so that's, as I started thinking through that, I immediately knew I wanted to have some kind of wall structure or building or something like that. And then these the um, these uh, collage papers, I was like, oh, that's perfect because this is the sheet that I used for today with all these different like this is some this is some type of plan or layout for something. 45 degree angle, this grid. Um, it just was perfect for this because I wanted it to be different. I didn't want it to be my same kind of grungy goodness, which is great. I wanted, I wanted to do something different. I wanted to remodel how I would typically think about this. And it was hard for me to kind of do my layers and then add these bits and pieces, especially like right on over the the super heavy gesso and you know like in in weird spots but I wanted to do it because it challenges me it helps me think differently and I'm remodeling how I think I love that word remodeling um, and I guess we're always constantly remodeling and growing and learning so maybe you um, for 2020 uh, maybe didn't follow through on some things, didn't, didn't take care of yourself, did exactly what I did and used excuses for a lot of things, and rightly so. Um, and there's no guilt, zero guilt. Um, I don't have any guilt about how I, how I survived. I have no guilt, but Moving forward, I'm in a better place. Ho hopefully 2021 will um, hold on. I, you know, we've kind of worked our way through some systems and plans for COVID. Um, it's still scary, but, you know, we've kind of got our routines now here at home and how we go out and all those kinds of things. Um, and so no guilt, but maybe you need to rebuild some things. Maybe you need to rebuild some relationships. Maybe you need to rebuild the relationship with yourself or your kids or a friend or a um, co-worker. Maybe you need to rebuild your physical self. Maybe you need to rebuild your faith. I don't know. Um, but I know that 2020 took a lot away from a lot of us. And as we move forward, we get to choose if we want to just restore things the way they were, which would be fine. Or rebuild and remodel and make it newer and better and grow a little bit more, just a little bit more. Um, and it's hard to make plans for 2021 because we're not sure what will happen, but I can't. For me, I have to move forward, um, just kind of sitting and waiting and stewing. Oh, that just doesn't do my soul good. It doesn't help me rebuild anything. <laughs> so, loves, um, that's just my message for me, and maybe um, it's a message for you. And um, 
yeah, so that is the inspiration behind this piece, this grungy, grungy goodness. So loves, I hope your Sunday is restful and peaceful. And I hope that maybe you can take a look at if there's anything you, maybe you don't, maybe you, you did a slam dunk for 2020 and you did all the things that you needed to do and you grew and you did all those things and amen and thank goodness. I, oh, I wish I was that way, but I wasn't. Um, so now I'm, I'm moving forward and I'm going to rebuild a few things and do things differently and um, I'm super excited about it and um, I can't wait. So, um, my loves, have a wonderful Sunday, and please always, always know that you are loved.